Also available, of course, at WCCSRadio.com. State Representative Jim Struzzi joins us in the studio here this morning. And our conversation is brought to you by Marcus and Mack, voted best personal injury law firm in the best of Indiana County contest. Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. Good morning to you. Good morning, Todd. Thanks for having me. Good to have you back in the studio with us today. A number of things happening in Harrisburg. We're in budget season now, and uh, I don't know what the negotiation schedule is among the committees, uh, but uh, I, I know that you're hard at it. And uh, even if you're not meeting as a formal committee, you're meeting behind the scenes with uh, a number of different folks try to hammer this thing out. Are we going to get there in time? Well, my goodness, there's a lot happening in Harrisburg right now. I can tell you, I, I got back late last night, just meeting after meeting, meeting with uh, different groups, different organizations, looking for some uh, you know, additional funding in the budget. And many of those organ- organizations need that. Uh, you know, the Home Home Care Association had their conference this week in Harrisburg. I spoke on a panel about increasing their reimbursement rates because home, home health care workers are vital. Uh, they serve an essential function for our families and our communities, and they're, they're severely underpaid. So I was on a panel discussion about that. I am one of the co-chairs of the Home, home Care uh, Caucus within the House. Uh, a number of different groups coming in. If you could see Harrisburg right now, it is just a steady stream of people moving through the Capitol. Youth groups of, of all different types, different activities. There was a, a group from Indiana Junior High came to see me this week uh-huh. advocating for the addition of vaping into the Clean Air Act. Uh, so there's a lot happening. As you said, there, are, there is work occurring behind the scenes on the budget bills. We haven't seen them yet uh, come out onto any sort of voting schedule. Uh, a lot of things happening on the House floor, obviously, this week as well. I continue to introduce pieces of legislation to help our communities, to help our, our families, and, and hopefully sustain our jobs here in Indiana County. But there is a lot of work underway right now. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, different angles that we could take in this conversation. Uh, your colleague, Representative Smith, also from here within uh, Indiana County, yes. um, uh, expressing outrage uh, this week at a uh, bill uh, that was uh, proffered by by the Democrat um, majority, uh, uh, having to do with uh, abortions, and uh, it's it's interesting to watch as national politics mm-hmm. um, uh, filter their way into into state politics, which is a necessity. <laughs> and uh, this particular bill. Uh, in in his mind, quite egregious. Uh, mm-hmm. um, what's your feeling on, well, on what was the attempt? I think you know. Unfortunately, to be to be quite blunt, I think the my, my colleagues on the other side of the aisle are running a political agenda right now. Uh, these bills are poorly written. Uh, they're very vague and they're very difficult to support. Yes, they are. They are in concept good ideas in a lot of cases. I'm not sure the one that you referenced related to abortion. I had not seen that, um, but I know a number of the other bills that they've been running are, are just. They're, they're very poorly written, as I said, um, and, and so the, the danger in, in a poorly written bill is, is how will it be interpreted once it's written into law, if it gets that far. And so that's a lot of the concern, and, and, and the unfortunate part is that um, you know the Democrats run the House right now. They have the Speaker's seat. They have the majority leader. The majority leader determines what bills run. The committee chairs determine what bills run, and they are running these bills through very, very fast. They're not even allowing the amendment process to occur properly within the committee. So uh, we don't even have a chance to work collaboratively on these bills, and that's really one of the the large concerns. Yes, a lot of these ideas are good. A lot of these things uh, that we should be discussing, uh, a lot of them are are bad ideas as well, based on, you know, uh, as you said, the the national political narrative. And I'm not sure we should be going down that path when so many Pennsylvanians actually need help right now. You know, with inflation, with the loss of our jobs here in, in, in Indiana County that are, are being threatened by some of these policies. So I think, you know, we need to really focus on helping families, helping our communities. We need to stay away from this political narrative, uh, this national political narrative, because people need real help right now. And, and, and oftentimes uh, folks in Harrisburg get caught up in, in their, their own uh, agendas. I did misspeak. It wasn't abortion. It was sex change operations. Um, According to Representative Smith, uh, the bills uh, would lead to the punishment of any doctors who, for religious or professional reasons, refuse to perform sex change operations. In addition, it would allow biological males to play women's sports if they choose and require the sharing require the sharing of bathrooms and locker rooms in public school settings. Sure, yeah, that's House Bill 300. A lot of discussion uh, about that across the Commonwealth, definitely in Harrisburg. Everyone deserves to be treated equally. The unfortunate part, as I said earlier, these bills are poorly written. All they simply did was insert some language into the Pennsylvania Human Relations Act that opened the door to all of those things that you just mentioned as possibilities. Because again, they are poorly written bills that are way too vague. Yes, everyone deserves equal treatment. And honestly, 
in the Human Services Act, uh, in the Civil Rights Act within the federal government, those rights are already given. However, what this bill would have done, because it is poorly written, would have opened the door to who knows what, because it's not clearly defined. And that's one of the concerns that were voiced during the debate here uh, this week. And that's why I couldn't support that bill either. Yes, I believe everyone should be treated equally. We should not have any discrimination in this country. But again, those rights are already given, and we need to get down this path together. I think, again, as I said, that's part of the problem that's happening in Harrisburg right now. They're jamming these bills through without any discussion, without any meaningful actual debate in the committee to craft these bills to make them better, to make them something that we can all accept. And so until that occurs, it's very hard to support any of these bills that they're promoting. Well, you mentioned uh, some bills that you have introduced. What are they? What's the aim of them? Well, my goodness, I have many, many bills that I'm working on right now, Todd, some dealing with mental health, dealing with substance abuse, um, working, again, to continue to try and sustain our jobs in the energy industry. I have the bill that was introduced uh, last session to create limited liability for people who volunteer in our parks, which was supposed to run out of committee this week, but that did not occur. I'm also working on a bill to add farm equipment into the Lemon Law. That was a problem that came to me here in the district. I'm working, of course, on the Fairness and Broadcasting Act that, that you guys widely support because it will give you more opportunity to broadcast those high school sporting events. I'm working on uh, a lot of different bills with my colleagues to basically help grow our economy, help sustain our economy, and make sure that our families and, and, and really our, our young people have the opportunities they need here in Pennsylvania. Mental health fair happening today here in Indiana, and I know that uh, mental health has become one of the top priorities that you've been working on in Harrisburg. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, there's a number of uh, opportunities with all the funding that's been allocated. There was $100 million allocated in last year's budget that still hasn't been utilized. There's another $100 million uh, being proposed for our school districts in this budget, and then $20 million to go back to the counties for funding that's, that's uh, desperately needed to help provide those mental health services here in our communities. So I am a co-chair of the Mental Health Caucus within the House, so we're going to be working to try and properly allocate those funds and to make sure that people have the services they need. I think you know, one, one of the, the, the foundational problems that we have right now in our society are mental health issues. I think they're leading to a lot of the problems that we're seeing with, with violence, with depression, with suicide, with substance abuse. I think it all stems from these mental health problems that we have and the pressures that people face in our society. So we need to make sure people have the resources that they need, that our providers have the resources they need to make sure that we can help people. It must be pretty heartening to you to see that mental health has become a priority for uh, a lot of people, not just uh, in in mental health profession circus, uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, not circus, uh, but circuits, uh, but with uh, with legislators as well. Now it seems like uh, the legislature is embracing, uh, uh, trying to find help for the mental health problems we have. Well, I think we see where the the challenges are. Um, you know, it, it, it's it's. It's widespread. It's in every community, every demographic, every geographical area. We're all facing the same challenges. And so we need to come together collaboratively to address those issues. And that's why I'm leading the charge within the Pennsylvania House to try and make sure that we are providing the mental health services and resources that are needed. All right. You have other bills that uh, you are wanting to see acted upon here uh, as we continue with the budget process and as we head towards summertime and sure uh, you know summer recess will come at some point and probably before a lot of the work gets done that needs to be done well there's there's a very short time now before we do our break for summer after the budget and we want to make sure that of course we're working on the budget there are, as I said earlier a number of budgetary requests you know I'm a co-chair again of the Pashi caucus so I want to make sure that our state system gets properly funded uh, i have an, as I said, 15 bills that I've introduced. I'd like to see all of them move, obviously, but that's, that's, that's a challenge from time to time. Um, but there are some that I think are, are, are really needed to move forward. Again, Cody's Law is out there for the third time, I believe, so I would like to see that move. I've introduced a bill to uh, increase the state police complement, which is one of their requests during the budget hearing so that they can hire more state police to make our community safer, and I think that's, that's very important. I do want to highlight before we, we break, Todd, that I'm um, hosting next Friday a agricultural breakfast with uh, Agricultural Secretary Russell Redding. So we'll be having him here in the district at Mack Park Pavilion from 9 to 11, I believe, next Friday. So if, mm -hmm. if anyone in the agricultural community or anyone's interested in hearing what the secretary has to say about agriculture in Pennsylvania, uh, just RSVP to my office. Uh, you can stop in at our office on Philadelphia Street or visit our website. He is State Representative Jim Struzzi spending some time with us here this morning. Um, 
When last we spoke, it was in the wake of the announcement of the Homer City Generating Station and uh, the difficulties there uh, and the impending closing of that plant. I know that you've been working on that issue along with Senator Pittman since that time. Uh, what's the latest progress on it? Well, we're absolutely working hard on that. We're meeting in Harrisburg. You know, Senator Pittman and I have been discussing uh, with the power plant, you know, what we can do to try and preserve the jobs that are there, looking to the future as well uh, for that site because it is a very viable site. Um, there, there's opportunities. Um, I, I'm obviously going to fight for the jobs that are there right now and continue to push for the governor to stop the regional greenhouse gas initiative. And I think I, I feel confident that, that we can make progress on that front. But the bottom line is we need to do what's right for Homer City, for Center Township, for Indiana County, and that's my foremost concern, the loss of that tax revenue, the loss of those jobs, uh, the impact on families, on our communities. So I'm going to continue to fight, continue to be vocal uh, in, in trying to preserve what we have, but also, as I said, look to a, a viable future for that location. One of the things that you have been involved in, and so is Senator Pittman here in Indiana County, is uh, finding the funding to help with the broadband. Yes. Uh, and uh, the business implications of it, uh, they are huge, aren't they? Well, they certainly are, and I, I'm, I'm happy to see that we are making progress. You have to give credit to the county commissioners and Byron Stauffer from the planning uh, department because, you know, we have been working on this for many years, um, ever since I took office and before, even with the chamber, because we realized the implications that a lack of broadband has. Um, people want to live in, in our communities. They want to live in, in the, the quality of life that we have in the country settings and work elsewhere. You know, a lot of people work online, but you can't do that if you don't have uh, good broadband. So it definitely impacts our, our local economy, you know, our local population. So we need to do everything we can to, to continue to move that needle forward. Uh, I'm happy that this week um, uh, REA was in Harrisburg for their, their uh, statewide conference. So I met with them. And they're working on some, some projects to use some of their facilities to expand broadband access. So I think, you know, uh, we're going to get there. Technology will get us there, but also a commitment from myself, from Senator Pittman, and from our county leaders to make sure that happens. All right. He is State Representative Jim Struzzi. You mentioned uh, the breakfast, the agricultural breakfast. Yes. Do you have other events coming up with We it do, year? yes. In July, I believe we're going to have a concealed carry event. We had one, I think, two years ago. A lot of people came out for that. Um, that's a great event. We partnered with the sheriff and the district attorney on, on that event. Um, we're going to be continuing to partner with the district attorney as well on his senior events. We've been visiting different social centers around the county to help senior citizens with the property tax and rent rebate. Uh, that's a great program to help seniors and, and people with uh, low in or fixed incomes. So we've been doing that as well. And always my door is open. Uh, our staff here in, um, in Indiana, we have an office on Thursdays in Homer City. We have an office on Tuesdays and Wednesdays in Blairsville. And, of course, visit our website and make sure you subscribe to our weekly email to stay in touch. The State Representative Jim Strusey, thanks for the visit. Uh, absolutely, Todd. Thanks for having me. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS 101.1 FM and AM 1160, online at WCCSradio.com.